Okay, I, I'm here to finish up my. Uh, what is this over here? Oh, uh, somebody's. Uh, hey man, I'm here to finish up my video that uh, part two I, to finish up on part one. I had to leave abruptly. I had a business call, and I have an opportunity right now to join. Um, another radio station. I I I am not going to uh, disclose the name of the station for obvious reasons, but I'm excited uh, to be there. I'm excited that they have decided to give me f uh, pretty much full reign. I told them what they would expect from me and um, what I expected from them. And I hope that we will have a uh, an excellent relationship, both business and uh, and friends. And uh, I'm I'm content. I'm not overly excited because these things sometimes, you know, don't don't uh, don't don't pan out. But what I'm happy about is, thank God that I have my uh, website, which right now we have show number six on there. If anybody would like to check that out, that's the crazyjoeshow.com. And let me tell you some, something, people. I strive for excellence. I strive for professionalism, integrity, honor, Hold on a second. I I'm not going to go off the video, believe me. I'm not in the mood to talk to him. Fucking guy. Always calls me when I'm when I'm doing something. Anyway, uh, see how important I treat. Let me just fix my camera just a little bit. Okay, that should be good. Um, let me tell you something. I strive for these things. I give out more than most people do. My shows are great. My talent is undeniable. But yet I've never been given a real chance. Asgard Radio was my second, you know, radio station. Uh, I used to be on uh, Talk Radio X, which I don't even know if they still exist. And then in between stations, I was trying to find my niche. I was trying to find out who I was as a broadcaster. And I pretty much had a concept and a format to... To do my show. And it took me a little while to perfect it. or And I'm still perfecting it. But. The thing that really. Is bothering me. Is. Why do these internet stations. And, I've, and I'm talking about the ones I dealt with. Not. Not Asgard. But in general, I was trying to get a gig, and I gave up on it. And I said, you know what? Let me do my own website, my own domain. So I don't have to take orders from anybody, and I don't have to be told what to do. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I tried to get a list of internet stations. I couldn't really find any. A lot of them were just offshoots of terrestrial radio. Or well, they were associated with terrestrial radio. Uh, can you guys just hold on one second, please? My legs are getting cold, and uh, I got shorts on, so uh, I like to put on my long, my long, long leg pajamas here, which are very nice and comfy. Matches the uh, 
the jacket I'm wearing. Hoodie, I should say. I'm trying to be cautious in what I'm going to say because I think without referring to anyone in particular, I believe in freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And, you know, people sometimes have hang-ups about their reputations instead of doing what should be the right thing to do. And that is to fight this woke movement, this leftist liberal scumbag agenda, which is trying to sequencer people like me who are really, really talented. And, you know, we're being literally, our hands are being tied by not just the leftist liberal communist movements out there, but by radio stations that should um, that should be defending uh, the Constitution, the First Amendment, and stuff like that, instead of caring about their own agendas. And uh, I think that's what happened in this case. I think my talents were overlooked, and it was more about the reputation of the station than it was about the big picture here that I could have brought big ratings with my show. My show was only going to get better and better. And I have the balls to say right now that I am the next Howard. Not for what he did, but for what he did what he had done to make radio significant and to put light, to to have these DJs or broadcasters, I should say, because I hate the word DJ, these broadcasters to say, look, I got talent. I want to express myself. I'm not going to be held down by anyone. And he opened doors for people like me. And he opened doors for other people. And this is why he is the master and the professor and the god of all gods when it comes to broadcasting. So, I don't mean to say I'm the next Howard, but uh, because of the political climate in this country with freedom of speech almost being uh, nullified, I don't know if I said that right, uh, because of the woke movement and the leftist liberal ideologies, you know, it's it, it's a different world today, and it's a poisonous world. Let's face it: if you sequencer the Constitution, the free speech, the free expression, all that stuff that this country is famous for, then you just committed a horrible crime against humanity. And especially artists. They said Howard could never be Howard today. Well, that's because he worked in a corporation. You know, Howard was great even on K-Rock. You know, he was was about uh, comedy. You know? He was about comedy. He wasn't really political like he is now. But uh, hopefully now uh, I'm moving on. Yeah, somebody wants to... Hold on. Just one... Give me a minute. I want to... I want to just say a few words before I include you in. That... This new opportunity that I have right now, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to make them famous. I'm going to give them high ratings. 
And I already told the owner that I'm going to do that for them. The other station had every opportunity, but they weren't interested. They wanted to handcuff me. And they wanted to, uh, you know what I mean? All right, let's bring in Sheila here. See how, if I know how to do this right. But uh, I already added uh, the Sheila there. Uh, um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know what it is? And I did bring Sheila in on camera. I'm pissed off and I'm sort of happy, but I'm sort of playing it cautiously. This opportunity, you know, I was told that I could do my show the way I see fit, that nobody's going to interfere with me. And it's going to be a three-hour show. Because last, last night, the other night, I did a four-hour show. I could do these shows by myself, standing on my head without any co-host. Yeah, I'm going to bring you again, Sheila. I don't know what's going on. You got to do it on your end, too, you know. I already added you, so you got to do it on your end, whatever you got to do. If you want to join me on video, you got to you got to add yourself, too. I already added you, so you got to do the rest. It says decline. Not everybody can do this. This is uh, a fairly new uh, technology here. And, and uh, oh, it's a crank call. Here's how I handle crank calls. Who the fuck is, is this? Hello? Who the fuck is this? What do you want? Hold on a second. Let me see who that is. You don't hang up on me when I ask you a question. See, it's not his... Check the number and dial again. That's the number that just called me. It's not his service. It's a crank call. That's why I tell him, what the fuck you want? All right. I'm going to do... I'm going to promise something right now. That station that took me on right now is not going to regret taking me on. I'm going to work my butt off in this station. I'm going to put together the best shows that you have ever heard in your life. And I don't want any excuses out there not to hear my show. Matter of fact, I got to grab my phone. I want to do this on the uh, video while I can. I'm going to go to that website. I can't, I, I don't want to say it for obvious reasons. But I want to see if I can hear a show now. Okay, so I'm on their website. How do I hear a show? Now I feel like you guys. Hmm. Just give me a second here. I'm, I'm going to do this when I'm off the video. Maybe this was for something else. Yeah. 
All right, I'll, I'll I'll take care of this in a little bit. I'll 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 call her. Look, okay, so, uh, she gave me the website, and it's it's not the actual site to hear the shows. So don't worry, Sheila, and everybody else out there. I will I will make sure that when I give the proper information as to the website, when I'm doing my show, I will give the proper thing. Because right now it's taking me to the chat room, and they have a chat room. So uh, um, while I'm on the air, it will be my responsibility to monitor. Every DJ has the responsibility of monitoring the chat room. So I will monitor the chat room. I don't know what you're talking about, Sheila. I really don't know what you're talking about. And, and uh, so, you know, you'll be able to uh, get on there and, and uh, you know, I guess you'll have to register or something and you get on the chat room and you can request, you know, whatever you want. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pretty much end this video. I'm going through a lot of emotional pain right now because I wanted to be with Asgard Radio. But the way I'm wired, it just wasn't going to um, it just wasn't going to work. They have a different agenda than mine. My agenda is a lot different than than theirs. So I'm taking my ball and I'm going someplace else. That's all I can do. Because I was going to make my crazyjoeshow.com a success. I was going to, you know, I was going to have a 24-hour-a-day uh, station playing the greatest rock music because, because where I live, we have a bunch of uh, uneducated, brainwashed hillbillies, and uh, they don't know what real good music is. I do. And uh, this was exclusively for the area I lived in because we have a classic rock station here, about 50,000 watts, and they're, they're famous. Now, jokingly, I said I was going to put them out of business, but there's no way I could put them out of business because they have sponsors. But there was a radio station that came in this area called Z-Rock, and they were down in Texas. They played the greatest music you ever heard in your life. I mean, fantastic rock. And somehow the classic rock station chased them out of the area. It took a year, but they chased them out. Because this station, the one that I'm going to give a massive helping of competition, <coughs> has been here since the 70s. I don't know what kind of station they were in the 70s. Because there was great music back then, but they play the same shit over and over again. They'll play Crazy Train, where you you want to vomit when you hear the song. They'll play a, uh, the Black Crows, um, Hard to Handle. She talks to angels. Don't they know they have other songs besides that? They have other albums. I'm telling you, people, this between. The, the woke movement and the politically correct movements that are brainwashing and destroying this country with the new world order and radio stations that call themselves the home of rock and roll music because they're brainwashing people so they're part of the new world order well I'm going to tell you this right now I, I am not part of any new world order I am a rebel and a fighter, and I refuse to have these entities fuck with people's brain. That's why I left Asgard Radio. I left Asgard Radio because we don't follow the same philosophy.
because I believe in freedom. I don't believe in brainwashing. I don't believe, look, everybody has their own agenda. I understand that. But my agenda has nothing to do with the New World Order, has nothing to do with the leftist move, communist movements of freedom of speech. Thank you, Tony. I'll bring you in on camera. I tried to bring in Sheila. It didn't work. Let's, let's bring in Tony, who's going to be on my show, no matter uh, what station I'm on. And Tony talks a mile a minute. Can't even get a word in with this guy. He's like this when he talks. About, I'm a good guy. God. But he, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. I like his band, and, and I like what he stands for. He's a blue-collar worker. He's the type of guy that I like to be friends with, people who are blue-collar. And speaking of the devil, there he is. I heard an explosion. What's going on? What's happening there, Tony boy? I, I just caught the tail end of you preaching some good stuff. I'm happy for you. Good for you, brother. Yeah, I'm going to another the station i wanted i wanted to make my announcement to my friends including you that uh we've decided to switch uh you know radio stations we're going to go to a station where we can actually do our show the right way without censorship without people telling me what i need to do or what i don't need to do i'm i'm a little bit um like in other words i'm i'm i'm, I'm not that happy because I really wanted to stay with Asgard Radio, but unfortunately, I not I, I did not get the the opportunity, even though I promised them that I was going to give them big raise. Now you heard my show the other day. Uh, what did you think of it? I thought it was very good, very entertaining. You were a blast. I listened until I uh, passed out because I had to get up early and go to work. But uh, yeah, you. You were definitely very entertaining, and that's what it's all about, right? You play good music, you had good topics, and uh, you're a panic. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think, and I, I, you know, look, everybody's got their own agenda. Asgard Radio has their agenda. They don't want me to use the N word. They don't want me to do this. They don't want me to do that. I understand that. I'm not angry at at the owner. I'm angry of the fact that I could not do my show the way I wanted to do my show, that I was holding back. I wasn't, I wasn't doing it full speed. And I wish they would have considered that, that, that to lose me is, 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 is not a good thing that they should have kept me work with me and, and let me do what I want to do because I was doing it later in the, at night. Anyway, it wasn't like I was doing it prime time. So I don't see the problem, but, they have a hang up with, you know, certain words. Like uh, he said to me, look, you can't say the, I'm not saying the N word. I'm playing a bit that has the N word in it. So if it's good enough right. for them, which is the people using it, then it should be good enough for us. There should be no double standard. Well, exactly. Well, unfortunately, uh, when you deal with uh, corporations like that, you got to, but, um, you do you do put the, the the claimer up that it's an X rated uh, R rated show, and there's some foul language, and uh, they should understand that. But you you exactly hit it on the head. You didn't use the word. It was part of your uh, little th uh, audio thing that you were playing, you know. And I've heard worse on uh, other stations and internet radio stations. So I don't know. Well, you know what? You you got to do uh, what you believe is best for yourself, and that's what you're doing right now and I'm, I'm happy for you good for you stand up for your right. rights you're an american right well that's the problem tony america is not being america america is being ruled by leftist liberal communist bastard new world order motherfuckers that want to suppress your speech they want to suppress my speech i'm lucky i'm able to say the few words that i'm saying right now on faith crap and uh uh, and uh, I was already uh, censored. I was deplatformed, uh, and I and I was paying sixty five dollars a month to do my show. And uh, some guy turned me in because I insulted him and his sister because he had it coming to him. He was a scumbag, weasel, fuck from another radio station that's decided to jump in and you know 
will not agree with my with my views. And and finally, he got me to say something that I shouldn't have said, but I had to say because I was angry. And I got deplatformed. So I know what censorship is. It happened to me. Even though I paid the company sixty five dollars a month, they still deplatformed me, and I'm not going to tolerate that shit from anyone. And and you shouldn't. And unfortunately, um, this is what our uh, country and the people that are running it right now is all about. Unfortunately, I mean that's uh, that's not America. America is free speech, free. You know that's why we live here. And uh, you know you notice all these other people from other countries are coming to America. Why are they coming to America? Because of our freedoms our rights and unfortunately to do what they're doing and did uh you know they're you know i just listened to a radio station today and they were saying that uh um white people are uh, oppressing all the other minorities and he pulled up facts and he said well if you want to get realistic the indian population indian americans are making the most money out of we're like the white people are like making like we're like nine nationalities down the list of making top money so how are we suppressing everybody else when everybody else is make, making more money than us it's just it's just retarded and you know it so you just keep you know standing on your your with your beliefs and you keep doing it man i mean that's why people tune into your show because you shoot straight from the hip you don't handle bullshit and uh that's why you're entertaining as hell man you know you know we don't know what's going to come out of your mouth next so you just keep well, doing I'm, it. I'm I'm so happy to hear the analyzation of my show from you because you know we're you know we're kind of strangers. We don't really know each other that well except through the business of music, rock and roll, and internet broadcasting. And I want to bring you know that to the table. I want to partner up with all the musician people out there and all the rock bands who don't get paid uh, like they should get paid. I want to advocate a union. Not an official union, but a, a get together of musicians where we can uh, actually protest uh, the club owners for their non committal uh, payment of musicians. Musicians deserve to get paid. They, they, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they struggle to learn their instrument. They put in the time and the, uh, you know, the fortitude. And these club owners feel that they can get away with paying these people nothing because they want free entertainment. I hope to organize a group that will uh, protest in front of these club owners and bring pressure upon them. I, I'm surprised that musicians have not done anything like that, but this is one of my ideas. My second idea is called Joe's Rock and Roll Army, where we're actually going to protest in front of MTV Studios in New York City, and I'm going to insist that I get the show, the Headbanger show again, but I want to call it Joe's Rock and Roll Power Hour. So I want an opportunity to do a host a show on MTV and also to protest in front of Sony Records and demand that they start signing rock and roll bands and stop catering to these rapper crappers. Uh, I'm, I'm with you totally. You know, uh, we're out there. Unfortunately, some clubs are forcing, uh, you know, original bands or just bands, period, to pay to play. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's like uh, back, in, back uh, in the 80s when uh, – you know, I, I just don't get, I don't understand it because we bring people to to uh, the show. They eat, they drink, they pay in the mission to see uh, a local live band, and uh, you hit it on the head. You know, um, I'm all for it, and uh, you deserve a, a a show like that because no one's doing it anymore. I mean, who who's really do who's really doing anything anymore? You know, and uh, you know, I I like to throw my rappers in the garbage because that's where they belong right yeah well let me uh since you're here uh this is tony from the band horizon he's going to be interviewed on one of my shows hopefully on the new station that i'm starting that's going to give me the freedom and the uh and, and the independence that i so definitely crave so i'm going to have uh, uh people do watch these videos i have a, a few friends uh tony why don't you uh introduce your uh band uh, horizon and and uh, anything uh, plug you want to plug social here on social media about your band the 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 the, the floor is yours the platform is yours about your excellent uh, excellent band all right my first of all my band's name is horizontal 
You can find us on www.reverbnation.com horizontal. You can find us on horizontalrocks.com. You can find us on Facebook at the horizontal at the band horizontal. Uh, I am the lead guitarist. My name is Smoking Tony Z. Yeah. We are uh, we are doing a show January twenty first at Artie's Bar and Grill in Frenchtown, New Jersey with uh, two of the best New Jersey tribute bands, uh, Victim of Vengeance and uh, Paradise Rose, uh, Saturday, January 21st. We're opening the show. We got a call to do this, and we're grateful. We just did a show where we got the same call to be on the bill with Saliva. That was the 11th of December, and we're grateful that we got the call to do that. And we that's basically how we've been uh, getting getting some really good shows, promoter, you know, back in 2013, promoter for uh, Michael Graves got in touch with us. Said, "Would you, you know, we think you guys would be really cool for uh, being on the bill with uh, Michael Graves," and we did it. Same thing with uh, we got a phone call from to be on the bill at Artie's with uh, Tim Ripper Owens, who was the Ju uh, singer for Judas Priest. He actually sings in KK's Priest Band, and that was a great show. Uh, that. We got a call to do OTEP. OTEP led us to uh, Drowning Pool. Drowning Pool led us to Skid Row. Skid Row got us Buck Cherry. Buck Cherry got us uh, Rat. And uh, we've been really grateful. Unfortunately, COVID whacked us pretty good. Well, the club scene whacked, you know, the COVID club scene. But, uh, you know, we played. We played clubs that didn't have uh, all those restrictions, and we kept playing and having a good time that's what it's all about but the band's name is horizontal look it up um uh i have a youtube channel intoxication 777 you can see all the videos from all the shows i said plus there's videos from when i was like 16 years old with my original band intoxication and uh anything we could do to help the crazy joe show you can count on us that was a, a fantastic presentation, uh, a lot better than when I was on the air the other night, and I uh, also invited you to name your band and your website and all the information. And uh, so that was a fantastic, uh, a fantastic uh, bio on the band Horizontal. I couldn't have said it better myself, even though I couldn't say it. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. I figured you didn't remember. And I, I didn't, I wasn't calling to uh, plug the band. I was just showing my support the other night. I wanted you to, uh, you know, uh, have a good show. And, you know, I didn't, I, I would have loved to go into some crazy, stupid stories, but I didn't want to steal the spotlight from you. That, that'll that be for when we do our interview and you lose control and we end up taking over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I know you're going to take over because that's the type of personality you have. But it's okay. You're uh, you're like a New Yorker. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. So uh, like I was saying, um, I don't know if you read the, the text later on, but you, you should start any of your shows with New York groups since yeah, yeah. you are from New yeah, York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a excellent idea, Tony. That was fucking amazing. Even if you use just a few seconds, you know, the very beginning, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you don't have to have any... And listen, you can go on my website, all of them that I sent you, and you could pick any one of our songs and you can use it for your platform. You don't have to pay me. Just fucking use it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I sometimes I ask bands... You know, that, that was years ago. You know, I've been doing this for about five years now. But uh, right now, I'm actually starting from you. And uh, I'm glad that, um, you know, I'm going to this new station. The show is going to be so fucking amazing. You're not going to believe some of the comedy that we're going to play. And it's going to offend people. But, uh, oh, somebody's saying hello to me. Uh, one of those av avatars, you know, like... Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Avatar, Tony? Yes, I do. Somebody's waving a hand to me, a woman with glasses and Very a, a red ski cap, and she's going, hi. I'm not sure who, who that is, but uh, see, I wish I could get well, good famous, good. Tony. I mean, I'm I'm thirsty for fame, and I think I deserve it, you know? Uh, well, you know, you got you to reach for the stars, right? And you could go on. You know, um, on Facebook, you go on my friends list. I have 4,500 friends from all over around the world. People ask me all the time, why do you have so many people? Oh, because when I 
present my music or present myself. I wanted to go around the world. So, um, it, you know, it's funny. We got a lot of friends from Europe and uh, Nova Scotia and uh, all, you know, and they all listen. And it's, that's what you should do. Go to all my friends list, put a friend's request for all these people. And when you do your show, it'll go totally around the world. I know you're getting, you know, what you, what you were saying, the other day canada and some other places but germany um germany and you know europe or, they love our shit you know what i'm saying they look they love they, they, they're gonna they would oh, love what you're doing yeah. nobody's doing it no more yeah you know yeah, yeah, europe europe supports um the american rock bands and it's uh it's a great scene in europe and um uh that guy troy who's on my friends list he had association with asgard radio he actually said he wanted to move over there and uh do some promotion for some of the record labels over there. So I wish him all the luck in the world to do that, you know? Right. Well, uh, it was just a suggestion. This way, when you do your show, you put it on public or on your friends. And, um, you know, if somebody grabs, you know, grabs an ear and you're very entertaining like you are, they're going to follow you and, and tell their friend and tell a friend. I mean, that's how we used to do it in the 80s and 90s, right? Right. That's how we got most of the crowd to show up. Plus, we used to buy, you know, half kegs of beer, and I had two Cadillac hearses. So, you know, it's like, you know, you could drink for free, but you got to pay to get in. And, you know, oh, nothing's better than a drunk. Don't forget, crowd. the 80s didn't have the internet like we have now. Exactly. So it was more of a friend tell a friend, where now you got the, you know, you just press a button and um, talk and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really don't know how to use a computer very well. My wife has to show me, but, uh, you know, I, I could talk to you. I'm using my phone to talk to you right now, so that's cool. I was going to take the tape off and let you see my ugly face. I but did I see don't it wanna... for a few seconds, though. Yeah, I don't I don't want to scare your fan base and oh, it was very you, scary. you know, I don't want you, you look like Frankenstein's <laughs> half-brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very scary looking. Yeah. So, um, Listen, I, I, that's why I'm not the singer. I'm the guitar player, you know? I yeah, run around. You gotta, nobody... you gotta use, uh, 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 what's that one? Um, the gel, uh, for, uh, uh, uh that hair you? color. You know, the colorization, uh, just for men. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go over that bad boy. Listen, I, I bleached my hair back in the 80s and 90s. I tried to look like Vince Neil. I ended up looking like Dee Snyder, which was a real bad look for me. And ever since I did that, I really don't got gray. I'm 56 years old. I really don't have – the only gray I got is on my face. And I shaved my, my, um, my beard and shit off one time, and I went to practice, and my singer goes – Look at the fucking turkey neck. And I was like, that's it. Practice is called. <laughs> I think you would look excellent with a dark, you know, your, your natural color on your beard. I think you would look uh, a lot younger and a lot more hipper. Well, thank you. My wife's been saying that. Well, she wants me to cut it off, but she's been saying that right along. She goes, you got to do something with that. You know, I was going to do something like, uh, see, I used to tie it in a, in a ponytail. Like, uh, you remember Lou Albano? Yeah, I know. When I first my singer, he uh, he you he looked like Lou Albano. Albano. I was big back then. I was like three hundred pounds. I lost a little weight, you, not much, but a little bit. You kind of look like Lou Albano uh, sometimes. It depends, you know, where you stand. I'm, I'm constantly. Be I uh, I wear a bandana and my glasses, and people will come up to me. You know, you look just like Jerry Carsey, even though I hate Jerry. You know, I don't really care for the Grateful Dead, but I got to take it as a compliment. The better compliment was somebody called me Tommy Chong. You know, hey, you look yeah. like Tommy Chong. But people say I look more like uh, Jerry Garcia, but you know. Yeah. Can you? I'm going to do that. I'm going to go on your friends list, and I'm going to try to make friends with your friends. Yeah, all you got to do is put in a request, and I'm sure they're going to, you know, just say, you know, Smoke and Tony Z, and you want to be my friend. And uh, like I said. Yeah, because I need fans. I need I need your social media friends. You know what I mean? I want them to start tuning in to the Crazy Joe show when I get cranking, you know? They're going to love it. I'm telling you. Every time he does a show, I get a notification. Yeah, my wife has you on YouTube, and she gets a notification every time you go on. So she watches you. We had the whole band watching uh, the other night. Right. Some of us had a hard time getting on. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, my, my bass player was supposed to contact you and, and pull us, do a skit with you. Yeah. But he had uh, something going on where he couldn't do it. But uh, I know he would make you laugh your ass off because he makes me cry when he does it oh. to me. And I okay. never, you know, if I, you know, he calls me anonymous, you know, and 
he does this stupid shit, and I'm like, uh, it's like back in the old days with you know the, the phone skits and shit. I'm like, you should do it after Crazy Joe. You would love that shit. Yeah. And right uh, next time, but you guys are like the Beatles. You know, you're all a bunch of comedians. <laughs> yeah, well, we're funny looking, so we got to do something. I mean, you know, we're not, do, you know, <laughs> we're we're not, we're not doing it with our great talent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, yeah, my 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 uh, singer, because I. Tell stories at practice. I fuck practice up pretty good because I keep telling stories. He goes, dude, you should go do open uh, comedy night and just talk about yourself. This way you don't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, insulting other people or getting yourself in trouble because I get stupid political, which is I should just keep my mouth shut. But um, and he goes, just tell stories about, you know, your rock and roll days in the 80s. Like, I was just telling this kid, he posted something on there, and he said, did anybody do any hallucinogenics and, and play out? I said, yeah, one time we forgot our cocaine, and we went and did the Dirt Club in, uh, I think it was I think it was in Orange, New Jersey, but the Dirt Club in New Jersey, it was a big old club uh, back in the day, and we didn't have no cocaine, and our deadhead friend brought some mushrooms, and I never did no mushrooms, and I'm over there, and my buddy next to me is like, oh, mushrooms are great, you gotta do them, so I put this handful of mushrooms in my mouth, and nobody told me they taste like fucking shit, and I'm sitting there chewing on this shit like I'm chewing on cow shit i'm like and i threw it up in my hand my buddy's like no no put it back in your mouth i'm like what put it back in my so we do these mushrooms the whole band does mushrooms and we go on stage we're fucked up and nobody's playing the same song i'm i'm telling you we we our first song nobody's playing the same song we're all playing different songs and we, people are doing Jimi hendrix solos and and john bottom fucking drum solos in the song and shit and then, like, three songs later, we're like, you know, out of nowhere, we're like, thank you, good night. And we walked off stage, and all the audience had their mouths, like, on the ground because they, they didn't know what the hell was going on. We didn't know what the hell was going on. But I do know that when we got outside to outside in the parking lot, I was going, I never seen colors like that ever in my life. And, uh, you know, the next day, I heard, you know, you guys put on one hell of a show and not very good. <laughs> That's a that's really unbelievable story. Holy shit! I don't do drugs, so I wouldn't know. But that's amazing. Yeah. Holy shit! That's a real rock and roll story. I'm Thirty-one years clean and sober, um, but man, but I played in a band called Intoxication. It was a way of life. You know, we drank. We had two Cadillac hearses that we moved the band around with, and uh, you know, our slogan was "Friends don't let friends drink and drive. They drink and drive with them." Fuck it. You know, why will should one die when we could all die? You know, but you know that was our that was our and we drank and we we you know I was a garbage can. I did every kind of fucking drug. So, but I'm you know clean and sober. I have more fun now playing clean and sober because I remember everything and I enjoy it more and I have a and I have a blast and I get all these great stories that I could tell fucking people like, uh, you know when I went straight and my drummer tried to turn me onto some pink Peruvian play cocaine. I'm like, dude, I'm 10 days clean and sober. I haven't done anything in 10 days. He goes, yeah, but I got all this pink Peruvian play cocaine. If I do it all, I'm going to die. And I'm like, dude, I'm 10 days clean and sober. I can't do no pink Peruvian play. And I'm like, nah, I don't want my friend to die. Well, so, anyway, and anyway I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go because I got to go to the supermarket and I got to get some groceries. Can you believe that? Because I don't have a beautiful wife like you to take care of me. Well, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry I talked too much. I'll talk to you later. Good luck. No, Keep this was good shit. because people are going to check this video out, and uh, they're going to be very excited about it, that this was actually like a, kind of like an interview in a way because you were telling stories and stuff. So when they hear my show and they hear you on the show, you know, they, they're going to know a little bit what to expect if they check it out. So this was this was really... Uh, yeah, everybody should tune in to the Crazy Joe show. He's very entertaining. You're going to love what he says. And uh, hold on tight because the, the, the show is about to begin, right? That's right. Because you know what? It's the show of shows. All right, brother. You take care of yourself. Keep preaching. I'll talk to you again. Thanks. All right, man? Thank you for coming on my video channel. That was very cool of you, Tony. I'm glad you're here. All right, bro. I couldn't answer the phone. I was driving the truck before. It was uh, fucking disaster. So. Sorry about it. I knew you were working. That's why I said I'll call you later. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Right. I don't know how to disconnect Peace this. Out. Peace out, brother. Peace. Peace, bro. Okay.